Youth unemployment skyrockets. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. I have my morning stein of coffee and I thought we'd look at this article from news.com.au discussing the unemployment rate for those under 25 and how they're going to be the hardest hit. And in many ways, this is the scarring. This is the scarring that the governor of the Reserve Bank is so fearful of. Now, I know there are a lot of viewers of the channel that are my age and older. And the older we get, the greater the risk we have of ageism and the inability to get back in there or to get a job. Youth unemployment is a huge issue as well. If you can't get your foot in the door, it's hard to get your foot in the door. It's a terrible situation to be in. And here I've brought up the youth unemployment rate for Australia. And this is based on the ABS data. So if we we treat this the same as the general unemployment rate, maybe we should double it to get the accurate number. Nevertheless, it is now at 16.1%. The youth unemployment rate in Australia increased to 16.1% in May from 14.1% in April. But look, look, I mean, it was at 11.6, 14, 16.1. Let's zoom out to five years. Look at that jump. Look at that jump, everyone. And there's discussions, you know, education, funding there. There's, I saw an article, and I might go through it later today, where they're changing the entire HEX payment structure for university to make it cheaper to do particular degrees and much more expensive to do others. There still have to be jobs for all of those people, even if you come out with a degree. I was talking to a you know, young lawyer working at 7-Eleven. He was hoping everything would be good next year. And in some ways, it's, it's a little sad because it shows a lack of, well, it just shows a lack of experience with regards to recessions and what that actually means. We zoom out to 10 years, you can see here, I mean, we're blowing everything out of the water. Let's go to 25. This was the GFC. Remember? The GFC, when youth unemployment shot up to 12%, to what it's been sitting at since then, pretty much since then, look at that. We've had, since the GFC, there's been no improvement in youth unemployment. It's gotten worse. A per, we, the civilization, the nation, we've been growing since the GFC. We've still been growing. But on a per capita basis, our growth has been below trend. So the young people here, I'd, I'd argue, I'd, just based on this, I'd say perhaps they haven't, they haven't benefited from this growth since the GFC. What, what do you think? All that money piled into education. Now, education standards are trending down in schools. And there you go. Look at that. Just look from the GFC down. All that building education revolution that you know people will tell you is the brilliant thing. It's made no improvement to the quality of education. So let's zoom out a bit further. We'll go out to the max range of the data. Now, this is the last recession that Australia had. Look at that. So if we just do the very advanced thing of, I need to get another screen where you can show me because I'll literally hold up a ruler here, move it over, I'll, I'll set that up in another video. But if we move that over to today, we've got, well, it hit over 20% from a base that was a bit better than what we've got. What do you think will happen, everyone? That could be replicated. Look in the 80s. Same thing. Same thing. It's been a while. That was the last jump. It's been a while since tough times. So it's going to leave... It's going to leave an impact on a generation, everyone. It is going to leave an impact on a generation. It certainly will. I think, remember Spain, all the youth unemployment problems they have, there, all the social issues that come with this. Think, think about that, What's, what the potential issues that can be caused with a high level of youth unemployment, particularly among young men. It needs to create uh, bigger increases in crime. So, the unemployment rate. Australia's under 25 hit hardest by job losses. Australia's unemployment figures in May were released today, which was yesterday, painting a shocking picture for one generation hit by more than 300,000 job losses. 300,000 job losses. You're getting a, a younger generation is once again 
taking a big portion of this economic hit, isn't it? Generation Z are getting smashed by the pandemic recession with 44% of job losses hitting Australians aged under 25. The generation divided has emerged in today's unemployment figures, the worst in nearly 20 years. Teenagers and young workers lost a stunning 100,000 jobs in the month of May, nearly half of all job losses. Well, that's the thing. They're working in industries which, which have been destroyed, which have been forced to lock down. They're working in tourism. They're going to struggle to get work. And economists warn teenagers and young workers face a double whammy because they'll be forced to pay for the largesse or largesse of the pandemic handouts through higher taxes for decades to come. Exactly. Exactly. So you're losing your jobs. The older generation has shut down the economy to keep them healthy. I bet you most of the young people think they're at a much lower risk. All evidence seems to indicate that. They, they can't afford houses. They've had to pay for their education. Previous generations, you know, the Whitlam, that, that always annoyed me when I was at university and I was, you know, I had to pay. And I, I was talking about all these lecturers doing this and this. Oh, you don't need to work while you study. And I go, well, um, I don't really respect your opinion because you went through in the Whitlam days and you got it all for nothing. So you're a bit spoiled, a bit entitled there. That that didn't go over too well. <laughs> Can you can you imagine me being a bit of a bastard? Yeah. Since March, under 25s has lost the stunning 329,000 jobs, representing the largest single age group in the pandemic unemployment figures. So this combined just with the issues that that the struggles that young people are having, the sk this is what worries me is that we're going to take a hard shift left. They're going to say, well, you know, this this crony capitalism isn't working, so we need to try socialism. That that's what worries me. And in some ways, I can't blame her. How many people have lost hope? How many people have lost hope? And that's the worst thing. But see, when you're, when you're young, there's still time. There's still time. You can build yourself up. You just don't need to punch out of that level of despair and just find any opportunity you can. Create something out of nothing. If you can't work, practice work. Practice work. We're, we've got certain advantages now. Now today, in the future, you know, you've got... Here, technology that I'm using now. You've got advantages. You, you can educate yourself for free on anything in the world. You can use time that you're not working to build your skill stacks like you couldn't in the past. It wasn't as easy in the past. And that can lead to things. Get out there. Net, run a, organize a networking event for other people. Meet people. Find ways to create something. Even if you're not going to make any money. At least you're networking. You're not stagnating that's the worst thing if you're, you're like a shark if you stop moving you're in trouble but then again you know if people have lost hope that's going to be hard to takes it has to come from inside so and while the new job figures put the official unemployment rate at 16 percent for young workers economists say the true figure is much higher well yeah i, I think 30 percent what do you think in fact one in four young australians is now out of work according to indeed Indeed's chief economist, Callum Pickering, for every young person who has lost their job in the last month, oh, sorry, if every young person who's lost their job in the last month was counted, the true unemployment rate would be 26%, he told news.com.au. Instead, hundreds of thousands of young workers have given up searching for work, returning to university or school, or not searching for work. So they've left the, they've stopped participating in the economy. That That's the scarring, that's the, the bad thing. Since March, over 800,000 jobs have been lost with under 25s, bearing the brunt and losing 329,000 jobs. And here's the thing. Here's the thing with JobKeeper, with the increased job seeker payments. Why would you work? People are, oh, I can't work. You know, I'll just wait for JobKeeper. I'll sit around, you know, and then, okay, JobKeeper disappears. The business you work for falls. You're going to hit the market with so many other people. You've got to get out there now. Even though you can't get out there, it's, it's tough. Job losses for women are also greater across all age groups. The decline in hours worked is also much larger among part-time workers. And we know that women and young people tend to concentrate in those roles, Mr. Pickering said. 
While the job seeker allowance was doubled to 550 a week during the pandemic shutdowns, it will revert to a smaller amount in September, and JobKeeper is likely to be phased out. Now, there's rumors that that isn't going to happen, that they're not going to reduce it. But think about this. We're going to have so many more people on this with the recession. That's going to be more and more money that needs to be taxed out of us. And it's going to be the young people now that have, that have suffered that are going to be the ones that are going to be taxed. You know, why, why, do, why doesn't the government cut a few of these programs that they're doing? Maybe we just need to go for no foreign aid for until until the budget is in surplus. How about that? I know it's tough, but we need to look after our own people first, our own nation. Oh no, no, Florian, how dare you say that? That's not politically correct. We're you know, we're a globalist, huggy, happy people. Which is utter rubbish. You know, we can't we can't help the world until we're strong. And right now, we have a primitive economy. I mean, I'll, I'll bring this up. We're a primitive economy. Agencies are comparing us to colonial nations, saying the interventions we need to do. We've got generation, generation or a youth unemployment that hasn't improved since the GFC. We've got housing that isn't affordable, property that just keeps going up. You've got young people who don't want to have families. So our population growth is dependent on bringing people in. And you've got some young people that are so stupid to think that, you know, children cost a lot of money. They don't, guys. You just don't spoil them. That's the secret. Just don't spoil them. You know, with these fancy things like insulation. And you, I am joking to everyone who's commenting that I do. I am a fan of insulation, but I barely have much in the house. So it's get, it gets cold. Although this, this room here, this is the insulated room in the house, so I shouldn't complain. Back to this. At some point, a lot of this debt is going to have to be repaid. Much of this is going to fall on the shoulders of today's younger workers, Mr. Pickering said. The impact of the GFC continued for the best part of a decade for younger age groups. Well, I'd, I'd argue, based on what we've seen today, it hasn't, it hasn't stopped. Prime Minister Scott Morrison said today, there was no doubt that young workers are bearish, are bearing the burden of the recession. We have we've had 800,000 people lose their jobs, but only 211 are classified as unemployed, the Prime Minister said. I mean, that's insane. Young people, they've been most affected by these numbers. But my hope is that equally as the economy opens up, they will hopefully also be the first to benefit from the economy opening up. As retail doors open again, as food courts are open again, as shopping centers are fuller again, we hope to see more of these young people get back to work. But the task will be greater. I mean... There you go. There's, look at look at that, everyone. That's just crazy. And I mean, our unemployment rate is only what seven point one percent. Oh, okay. We're not seeing the whole graph here, everyone. We're not. We never. They need to show us the whole graph. In the last two months, over eight hundred and thirty-five thousand jobs have been lost. These are not just numbers. These are our friends, family, workmates, and neighbors. Frydenberg said. Female employment fell by 118,000, making up 52% of the jobs lost in the month of May. Young people, youth employment, making up 45% of those jobs lost in May. These numbers reveal the scale of the, cha of the challenge we face and the mountain we have to climb. I mean, there you go. Mr. Morrison said he was not going to sugarcoat the unemployment figures, which he conceded was higher than the 7.1 official rate. Some economists suggest the true rate is closer to 11%. If we look at the Roy Morgan figures, they're saying about 14. Combined unemployment and underemployment is about a quarter of the workforce. And we've just started this recession, everyone. Remember, businesses haven't been going past. They've all been propped up. All these support mechanisms are in place. The ability to trade while insolvent is still in place. September is going to be interesting. I indicated that the Unemployment rate, I think, does understate where things are on the ground, he said. This is why I make no reference to that rate. I make reference to the fact that 838,000 jobs have been lost because that is what is actually happening out there. And that's good. That's good. He understands what's happening. What I know is 838,000 people have lost their jobs, and that is what we have to turn, how we have to turn it around. Well, how can we encourage businesses to get young people back? I know as a small business owner, we would hire people as their first ever professional job. 
And when Rachel did it, she got paid terribly. For the first six months, she got like $6 an hour. She was earning more working in the coffee shop on the weekend. But she was learning skills because when you first hire someone to be an architectural drafts person, they are terrible. You've got to learn. It costs money. And what happened was they made changes to the award to make it fairer for everyone. So after, if you're 21 or over, which a lot of students coming out of university were or still at university were, you had to pay them the minimum wage, even though this was a job to help people learn a skill. So all of a sudden we were paying people with no skills nearly 20 bucks. Good for them. No incentive for us to hire young people to give them a job. It got to the point where it was, wasn't viable. You'd spend six months training someone up, then they'd go and leave and go to another firm when you finally got them useful. We'd have people on for, you know, for two years that wouldn't even realize, wouldn't treat it like more than a little bit of a hobby job. So this is the thing. This is the thing. The big concern is, that they're going to keep job seeker at a higher rate. Distance, and that'll create a greater disincentive for working. So then they'll have to up the minimum rate. That's another intervention in the market. Sorry, up the minimum wage. And that's going to create less incentives to hire people, to give people their first chance. To give people their first chance. We need to look at new innovative ideas to create opportunities for young people to get a job. The problem is once you get long-term unemployed, because think about it, what, what, what's the difference between the bonus job seeker now and the minimum wage? What, six grand difference? You'd be, for, would you work all that time for that little difference? Doesn't seem like it makes sense. People aren't stupid. People are not stupid. They're not going to kill themselves for hardly any gain. So there needs to be some changes. And there needs to be incentives to actually hire people in this country. Because Guys, it's a lot of red tape. It's a lot of problem. It's a lot. It's a risk. It is a risk every time you take someone on board. If they're terrible, and often, you know, I know I'll get comments, you just need to interview better from some idiot that's never employed anyone in their life. Sometimes you want to give someone a shot, you know, and sometimes you need to have someone under your wing. They need to fall over so they can build up, so they can learn to work. There's certain people who've suffered in an intergenerational unemployment or poverty they probably don't even have a work culture in their family so they've got no idea so they they have to get slapped around by a boss to realize how to act but there's no incentive to do that when you're paying them like the same as someone who's who's competent and then that competent person gets jealous so you've got to pay them more then all of a sudden everyone is offshoring their workforce What do you think, everyone? Let me know your opinion. One way or another, this is going to be a generation that's going to take a big hit. And we just need to make sure we steer them away from the, you know, the gifts and the trinkets of the devil called socialism. As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support the content I create here, there are a few ways you can. You can join the channel on, on YouTube or Patreon. You can support us via using our affiliate links at Amazon or eBay or Independent Reserve and KuCoin. You can buy our merch from Heiser Says. You can... What else can you do? Yes, Pocket Squares. You can buy our Pocket Squares. Right there behind me, I always point the wrong way. Or you can support us via PayPal. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next episode. <laughs>